Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Ohio. Borrowing a line from football, offense sells tickets, but defense wins championships. And the Indians flash some serious leather last night in Minnesota. Oh, yeah, the long ball? That helps, too. And Mike Napoli needs tickets in the upper deck, adding another majestic clock to his collection. Today will be a bullpen day for the Tribe. Uh, that's the same bullpen who held the Twins scoreless for five innings last night. We're so excited. It's the Indians and Twins next on Sports Time Ohio. From Target Field in downtown Minneapolis, Minnesota, Cleveland Indians baseball. The road trip continues tonight. Game two of a three-game series between the Cleveland Indians and the Minnesota Twins. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. Indians got the series opening win last night, and Francisco Lindor continues to be a driving force for the Indians both in the field and at the plate. Boy, for a second-year guy, he has been so consistent on the year. When you look at his last dozen games, he has nine multi-hit games. He leads the world in three hit games with 23. He's hitting uh, 326 from the left side, 315 from the right side of the plate. He's as consistent as you can get both offensively and defensively. And when we look at the standings here. The Indians maintain their six-game lead on Detroit. Ten over Kansas City. They continue to play good baseball within the division, and let's hope that continues. Rick, fair or not, when you get to this point in the season, every play is magnified. Everything gets exposed. Defensively, you've got to be able to tighten up the ship, and the Indians played some really good defense last night. They week. certainly did. Late in the ball game. you know, when you're not scoring as many runs as you do at home, you got to make nice plays. Ramirez at third base had a very close play there, and then when you had a full count Maurer hitting and the runner was running you know Lindor covering the bag line drive right at him and then look at Davis taking an extra base hit away and you know it was a one run ball game at that point in time and you you make a big out and there you go boom <laughs> Well, the Indians pitching staff obviously has taken some hits here of late. Josh Tomlin went out of the rotation, meaning tonight will be another bullpen game. And now it looks like Danny Salazar will be out of the rotation for the short term. Andre Knott will fill us in on all the details when we come back. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. And by your local Toyota dealers, visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places.
Twin Cities as we get ready for first pitch tonight between Cleveland and Minnesota. The Indians riding high 82 and 58. They've won eight out of 10. They lead the Tigers by six in the American League Central Division. Tonight will be a different type of ball game. We've already seen one of these, a so-called bullpen game, where Mike Clevenger will get the start. We'll see how far he can go. What happens after that? Andre Knott has all the answers. Well, let's start with the news of the day. Danny Salazar, after leaving in the fourth inning last night, will fly home to Cleveland tomorrow morning to get his arm checked out. Today, he seems to be a little bit better, very sore, a little bit, a little bit of swelling going on with his arm. They say it's muscular at this point in time. We'll know more tomorrow after he gets some MRI back in Cleveland. Because of that, Mike Clevenger, it's still a bullpen day, but Mike Clevenger is going to be looked at to go a little bit further into the game tonight, guys. They're going to do, push him as far as they can go. If he can't go deep in the game, Josh Tomlin is in the bullpen to help out. If Josh Tomlin doesn't get in the game, he will then throw a side tomorrow, and he'll start on Wednesday in Chicago as Salazar will miss his next start at least. Other things to talk about, the bullpen has been great for the Indians recently. Last night, pitched five innings, did not allow a run, and had four strikeouts. As much as we talk about the starting pitching, in the second half of the season, guys, the bullpen has held its own and helped this team propel it to the record that they have. And with the situation with the starters currently, look for the bullpen to be leaned on a little bit more. Austin Adams has been called up today as well because of the injury to Danny Salazar. He just got here. He's available in the bullpen tonight as well if needed. The Indians used five pitchers after Danny Salazar left the game last night. Joe Colon, Zach McAllister, Dan Otero, Brian Shaw, and Cody Allen. So the bullpen has already been taxed, and we'll see how Clevenger goes tonight as to whether or not that bullpen gets burned up even further. There's the starting lineup tonight that will face left-hander Hector Santiago. Only one left-handed bat in the lineup. That's Jason Kipnis in the two-hole. Here we go as Rajay Davis awaits the first pitch from left-hander Hector Santiago, and he fouls it off to the right. Rajay Davis last night 0 for 2 at the plate, but boy, did he make a spectacular defensive play late in the game that really helped secure a one-run victory for Cleveland. He said the minute the ball left the bat, he said, I just told myself that ball cannot hit the ground if it's in fair territory. And it was not an easy play by any stretch of the imagination, but he gave an all-out effort, made a sliding catch just inside the line and left. And well, it was a big one of many big defensive plays for Cleveland in the game last night. We talked about it at the top of the telecast. It was a one run game at the time and he took extra bases away. So it was a very big play. He's behind Santiago here one and two to start the game. Just missed inside. Not by much. Good pitch with two strikes. He didn't offer at it, and the ball just misses off the inside part of the plate. I think Santiago wanted that pitch, but he's a guy that doesn't give in. And now Rajay rifles one, and a diving attempt by Buxton goes awry. And Davis in the second base with a leadoff double. Buxton all-out diving effort got to it, got leather on it. But it just didn't stay in the glove. Well, Rajai got a fastball up out over the plate, hit it, and that was sinking on him. That's not an easy play as an outfielder. He's into that sun. You know, it's a six o'clock start. An hour earlier, it goes off his glove. It's a nice attempt. But Rajai hits his 21st double. You see, he's looking back into the sun there. He's the only guy in it. Left and right fielder in the shadows. So not an easy play there to start the game. Not at all, but Rajay with 21 doubles and 35 stolen bases. And he could be off for third if they don't pay attention to him. Especially with the left hand around the mound. He likes stealing with lefties. But you have uh, Polanco that's right behind him, sort of keeping him close. And the key is making him stop. Jason Kipnis fouls one off toward the left. And with Polanco dog, dogging uh, Rajay at second base, it gives Jason Kipnis a big hole on the left side to shoot for. Looked like he was trying to take him the other way on that first pitch. Low and away, one and one. 
Santiago a guy that will not give in. I mean he, he tries to attack you but when he gets ahead he sort of goes off the plate and tries to get you to swing at his pitch. Fastball between 91 92 breaking ball and the changeup. Jason with a line drive right field base hit drops in front of Kepler. Rajay did not get a good read on that ball and so he only moves up one base. He couldn't tell from his vantage point if that was going to carry all the way out to Kepler. So the Indians have a good start though first and third nobody out. And we'll take a look at Hector Santiago who is our Hyundai starting pitcher making his 29th start. It's his fourth start against the Indians this year. He's 11 and 8 but 0 and 2 against the Indians. He's given up nine earned runs in 12 and two thirds innings. Pitched a very good game back in Cleveland in his last start. Six and a third, three hits, did not allow a run. Francisco Lindor, fly ball deep center. Back goes Buxton. He'll make the catch. Tagging and coming home is Rajay Davis. And the Indians' lead is one to nothing. Lindor, who is the best in the American League at getting them home from third with sack flies has his 70th run batted in on the year and his 12th sacrifice fly which you were absolutely right uh, leads the league. Let's look at the twins defense in the outfield from left to right it's going to be Rosario Buxton and Kepler on the infield it's Beresford uh, Polanco is at short Dozier is at second Maurer at first Suzuki behind the plate. Now oh, here's Mike Napoli. His big blast last night was the talk around the ballpark today. 463 foot shot to the upper deck in left field. A little bit low. This is our great clip of the game. Breaking ball. Somebody asked Terry Francona last night what's it like to hit a ball that far he said I wouldn't know I can't even hit a golf ball that far. Well, I bet he could down low uh, two balls no strikes but a baseball different thing. Something the Indians would love to do tonight is uh, see Knapp with seven home runs against the Twins this year. Told me he had 11 back in 02. And that's the time he did all the damage in the Central Division. And Mike Napoli draws a walk, so Kipnis moves into scoring position. And three of the first four Indians have reached safely here tonight. Vic Carapazzo, we remember him from that 19 inning affair in Toronto in which he ejected. At least two, if not more, Toronto Blue Jays. Three from Blue the game. Jays. I think three of them were ejected. Carlos Santana, 0 for 4 last night with a walk. Man, it's low, ball one. Carlos Santana, for the year, 30 hits in 130 at bats. With a runner in scoring position. Thought it was interesting, Arch. We haven't seen it a lot, especially since the real emergence of Jose Ramirez as a run producer. But tonight, Terry Francona has Mike Napoli and Carlos Santana back to back yeah. in the lineup. The, the 30 homer twins. And then Ramirez batting behind Santana. The Indians version of the Bash Brothers. <laughs> That's bashed fair. What a diving stop at third by Beresford, the Australian. But the throw is not in time, and the bases are loaded. It was a bang bang play, and Paul Molitor might look <laughs> to his video replay guy to see if they want to challenge this. James Beresford making his major league debut. And watch the Australian lay out for this. It was a, a tough play. Tremendous play. Stop. He knew that was his only play was first base. And it looked like Santana beat it out. It's just a, a, an excellent play. That's about as long as throw you're going to have to make. He couldn't really get everything on it. 
and it, boy, it was close. I mean, it was really close. James Beresford, you talk about an odyssey. Yeah, what a great story, huh? More than 10 years in the minor leagues, over a thousand games played, finally realizing his dream here tonight. He was ready to quit after last year. Yeah. Well, you've spent that long, that much time, and he's always hit, just no power. He's always hit for a good average. Here's Jose Ramirez with the bases juice, takes a strike. Ramirez, three for five last night with a run scored. Pops this one to center. I don't think this is going to get it done. Kipnis tags. Buxton catches. And his throw right to the cutoff man. Kipnis cannot come home. Two down. One of the rare times Jose Ramirez does not get the job done. Looked like he, he was out in front of a changeup. Took the sting out of the bat. Had him a little bit out on the front foot. He's shaking his head, but you're right. Can't do it every time. See if uh, his teammate right here can pick him up, Brandon Geyer. Well, in 26 games with the Indians, Geyer has batted 304. And he's got an opportunity here to inflict some two out damage. Instead, it's a pop to fairly deep center. Buxton will make the catch. The Indians leave him loaded, but they get on the board first. The Twins are coming to bat. Gets the start for Cleveland tonight. The lineup he will face for Paul Molitor and the Twins is brought to you by Spitzer Automotive. Brian Dozier will lead it off. 39 home runs on the year. Joe Maurer bat second. Jorge Polanco is third. Max Kepler, Miguel Sano, Eddie Rosario in the middle. Then it's Kurt Suzuki, James Beresford, and Byron Buxton. And our Northern Ohio Hyundai starting pitcher for the uh, Indians is going to be Mike Clevenger, 25 years old, his seventh start. You know, in his last start, only won an inning in two thirds, 43 pitches. We'll see what he has today for Minnesota. And let's set the uh, defense for the Indians, brought to you by Jeep. It's crisp and left. Davis at center, Geyer in right. Ramirez at third, Lindor at short. Kipnis is at second, Santana at first, with Perez doing the catching. Brian Dozier leading off and popping one high in the air and foul out of play. Brian Dozier one for four last night with a double. The 
And a low fastball hit on the ground to short. Lindor throws him out one away. Our keys to the game are brought to you by Wayside Furniture. The clutch hit, which already we saw in that first inning, still elusive at times for the Indians. And hey, make make the plays defensively. That goes a long way to helping your team win, especially in one run games like last night or low scoring affairs. Yes, indeed. Low scoring affair today in Houston where the Astros got a huge win over the Cubs. Two to one the final. Houston trying to keep their wild card hopes alive. Levenger misses outside. They started the day two and a half back. But there's so much action right in front of them. Baltimore and Detroit who are tied right in front of Houston they're playing each other tonight so they'll get a break there they were hoping for some help from Tampa Bay but the Yankees is that game a final yeah, yeah it the is Yankees yeah, they're winning final. five to one yes it is that was a scoreless game for the longest time going into the seventh <laughs> inning interesting arch that uh, Paul Molitor flip flop both Maurer and Polanco in the lineup today. Last night he had Polanco hitting second, the switch hitter, right. left handed hitting Maurer batting third. I wonder if that's at all a product of knowing that they'll see a number of different relievers today. That could be. Two down. And now Polanco. Well, they, as Andre said, they'd like to stretch Clevenger out a little bit longer if, you know, they can if uh, if he lets them. But so the key would be throwing a lot of strikes. And I think the key for the Indians would be get on the board early. They got one in the first. Boy, it would have been nice to get another base hit. But if they get an early lead, that would certainly help as well. Here's the crazy thing about Clevenger, because we've seen this. And, and maybe it's not if I really think long and hard about it it's not maybe that unusual for a young pitcher. But this year especially here lately and in particular since they moved into the bullpen. First pitch of an at bat he's thrown an inordinate amount of strikes. But it's what happens after that that has been his Achilles heel right. Hard to figure out how he can be so good at getting ahead. But then as it go to nibbling is that what it is I would think so. I mean and I think that's why uh, Terry really likes him out of the bullpen more than starting because when you go through that that lineup second or third time and it makes it difficult. You see he had strike one and now where's he sitting here in one three and one. And he's much better against left handed uh, hitters than right handed lefties hitting just 180 maybe because he throws that change up righties are 100 points higher they're hitting 284. And there you go. Well, the two out walk keeps the inning alive, and here comes Max Kepler. Kepler, 16 homers, 59 runs batted in. That's low. That's five straight. And there's a change up even after five straight out of the strike zone. Well he, he likes to throw a lot of change ups when he's behind in the count and I think that's what you know why he's tough on left handers but I don't know if he can throw that pitch to righties.
That pitch was up. Rajay coming Got in it. and he made the Got catch. It. A terrific play in center field by Rajay Davis. And that will end the inning. Maybe. Here's Paul Molitor yet again. Oh, yeah, that went in. He caught it. I saw him get that glove underneath. Go to the break, boys. MLB.com at Bat App. You can stay connected all season with radio broadcasts, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your smartphone and tablet. Coco Crisp leading off here in inning number two for the tribe. And he takes a strike. That'll even the count of one and one. For Hector Santiago, as I told you, it's his fourth start. His first one came as an angel, LA Angel, and then he made his very first start against the Indians after the trade when he got traded to Minnesota, coming back on August 4th. He was in Cleveland, he went five innings, and he took the loss that night. Coco draws a leadoff walk. Well, you, you wanted uh, Davis. That was one of your keys to the game. That was last night's catch. And this one today in center field. They could have kept the inning going, and he gets there in plenty of time to pick that ball up off the ground in center field. Love to see good defense when you're on the road. No extra outs. Now, Rajay moves to the on deck circle now as Roberto Perez stands in. He squares. And he bunts it right back to the screen. Boy, this is one thing this this kid will have to do is it learn how to bunt and move runners along when you get into you know close ball games. He's not hitting this year. You got to be able to bunt and get him over. Squares again takes a little high. One and one. You know, when you go and play baseball on the road, if you don't give up free base runners like walks, a lot of walks, and you don't give them any extra outs, you got a pretty good chance of staying in that game and winning it. Funny that. At the end of the year, it's the really good teams, the teams that have the best records, that play the best defense, that usually make the fewest mistakes. Right. It's not always the case in, say, football, where a good team can still 
turn the ball over a lot and win in baseball. Now, I don't know I'd have to go back and maybe see if we could do any research that would prove otherwise but I would imagine if you lead the league in errors it's a good chance you're not going to win a division or get to the postseason. Uh, yeah I would I would agree with that you're not you're going to be a second division club it's be tough to out hit that many mistakes. Yeah. And then, you know the pitchers that think of the number of pitches it puts on pitchers and you know the extra innings and the extra outs they have to yeah. get it's just it, it, it doesn't play well a true domino effect. Popped up back out of play. Three and two the count. This is a pitch that was. Well it's borderline three one that's on our Nissan pitch track he falls it straight back. I still wish I, he, he would have had a bunt in that situation to get him over even if it's three one you know you're going to get a high fastball. Inside he missed ball four. So back to back walks for Hector Santiago that's already three he's issued. And this is a Minnesota club that that's been a problem for them lately their starters have walked right handed batters now that's 26 walks to right handed batters in their last 14 games and from a percentage standpoint that's the most in the majors. Yeah. Well they're giving you the start to the end that's how the Indians won last night they, they built an inning up for them and they took advantage of it. It was Tyler Duffy the starter that you know had the error and the, yep. the issues and you know three unearned runs. He hit a batter to get the inning started then he made his own error on a double play ball and a couple of base hits later they had a four run inning. You see Coco Crisp at second Roberto Perez at first Rajay Davis who doubled his first time up pulls this one to third to second for one. And they do turn a double play. Yeah, they looked like they got him at first base. It looked like they turned it. Tried to pull a change up here. Beresford uh, over to Dozier in time to Maurer. And they get the double play. Coco Chris ends up at third base but with two down Jason Kipnis will be the batter. They're still waiting. Uh, looks like Tito wants to go out there. He's not sure. No. Jason Kipnis uh, had a base hit his first time up and he ended up at third base. The Indians had him loaded in that first inning but managed just the one run that came on a sack fly from Lindor. So another two out opportunity here in the second. In the dirt nice block there by Kurt Suzuki. There was a lot of talk about Kurt Suzuki possibly being dealt at the trading deadline teams like the Indians who were looking for maybe catching help were thought to be interested but nothing materialized the 2 0 that almost went wide nice grab by Suzuki well he doesn't look like he's on target tonight so far Santiago unless he finds it and gets back on track he's falling behind. Only 46% strike so far today. And a foul back, full count. There's Coco Crisp at third base with two down. And there's ball four, another walk in the inning. It's 
get out to Andre Knott. One thing to remember about Santiago, since he was traded over here from the Angels, he's had a thumb injury that he's been dealing with in his last start against the Indians. If you guys remember, his off-speed pitches weren't right. working very well because of that thumb. That could be part of the issue that he's been dealing with, but he doesn't want to come out of the rotation, if you remember. That's something to remember. The other thing is, Indians really sit on the fastball. They said it may only be 90 miles an hour, but kind of jumps because of how he throws it and out of the windup. Yeah, sort of across, the, right. across a bo his body, he comes at you. I can see that. Now that you mentioned it, I do remember that, uh, Andre, with his thumb injury. His, he had a tough time commanding his changeup and his breaking ball. So maybe that's why they're geared fastball today. Lindor rolls it to third. Beresford goes to second for the inning ending force. Where the Indians letting a lot of opportunities slip through their fingers early. Middle of the second, 1 0 Cleveland. Access to uh, postseason tickets by purchasing 2017 season tickets. By becoming a uh, season ticket holder, you'll get priority access to tickets for any postseason games played at Progressive Field, plus opening day, team shop discounts, access to tribe rewards, and more. Just go to Indians.com postseason for the details. Big Miguel Sano leading off for the Twins here in the second and takes a called strike. Hits this one a long way. Deep left center. And it is going to the bullpen. Home run number 23 for Sano in Minnesota has homered at least once now in 11 straight games. It's tied with Texas for the longest current streak in the majors. Well, it's a slider and not a very good one. It stayed right there. And it speeds it up for Sano, and it was high, and it gets into the bullpen. Not much you're going to do there, so they are on the board. They tie it up. Sano, his 23rd home run. Eddie Rosario won at bat last night late in the game. Up high, one ball, one strike.
there's a ball that's going to drop in center field off the end of the bat. That home run by Miguel Sano snaps a string of 18 innings without allowing a home run for Mike Clevenger. It's a pitch away. Actually, Rosario had a nice little change up there away. For comparison's sake, Rich Hill has the longest active streak. He's gone 62 innings consecutively without allowing a home run. That base hit by Rosario, he had a string going against, a uh, hitting streak against the Indians. I think it was 17 games, but he had a pinch hit appearance last night, made an out, so it snapped it. He comes right back tonight in his first appearance and gets a hit. Kurt Suzuki takes down low. Clevenger with a runner at first who takes off delivers but it's fouled back by Suzuki and a count one and two High two and two. Rosario back standing. He has five steals. He's been caught once. Indians outfield straight away for Suzuki. Not a guy that the um, metrics really look at as a pull hitter or an opposite field guy. He's when he's swinging well and getting base hits, he takes it to right center field. And if he speed, you speed his bat up and make a mistake with a breaking ball, he can you know hit it into left center. Or make a mistake, you, you know, with a hanging breaking ball, and he could take you deep a little bit, but not not too much. It has to be a mistake. In the air to right, Geyer makes the catch, one away. Well, that's going to bring up James Beresford. What a story this is! He began the year at age 27. Saying to myself, well, this is probably the end of the line. I'm 27. I've never gotten a sniff of the big leagues, even though he's batted 300 every year in the minors. He's been a terrific player. Yeah, listen to the crowd. And his story has been well received here in the Twin City. Played over a thousand minor league games. 440 of those at Triple A. 
Swings at the first pitch. Santana will go to second for the force. And that's out number one. I'll make that out number two. But here's the other thing with Beresford. He, when he got to that 1,000 games played, mark his teammates. And John Ryan Murphy, his current teammate, was the guy really behind it down there in the minors. They got T-shirts made up. Mr. 1,000. Yeah. Now a little kangaroo carrying a flag with the number four. That's how many home runs he's hit in the, those 1,000 games in the minors. The Australian colors, too. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty cool. And what a play defensively he made in the first inning. Byron Buxton taking low ball one. Paul Molitor said he really would have loved to have been in the clubhouse when manager Mike Quaid revealed the news that Beresford was getting called up. And the way they did it was pretty cool. They left him out of the lineup for the final game of the season. So you're probably thinking to yourself, wow. This is how it ends. I don't even get to play the last game. Yeah, right. And the manager addresses the team and said, you're going to the big leagues. A dream come true after all that time. Well, the hard work, the dedication, he, he, the time that he's put in, and he served the organization, it's, it's a classy thing to do. One one. Brian Dozier, who's in the on-deck circle, said it's almost hard for him to talk about. He gets emotional because the two of them spent a couple of years together in the minors and he said I just know how positive how upbeat he is and how hard he's worked. So for this dream to come true he said man it's just it's been an amazing experience to be part of. Two down with Beresford at first and the two one is wide. When he got news of the call up he obviously called his folks back home. And they surprised him. They got on a plane and flew 25 hours wow. to be here. And he didn't know they were going to be here. And Brian Dozier said, hey, we got to go uh, sign some paperwork. Get your major league player identification card. He walked out of the clubhouse and mom and dad were standing there. Oh, cool. 3-1. Check. Did he go? No. Ball four. And the inning continues. So 2-1. Two out and now Dozier to the plate. Not to mention Arch for, with James Beresford officially playing in this game. That's the 49th player that Minnesota has used this year and that's a new club record. 49. Yeah. Didn't he use. 49 one year when Charlie Manuel was the, uh, the I don't remember the, the exact number but it was a record for pitchers at least that year. I think it was something like 30 pitchers in that one. That was in uh, 2000. Lots of injuries that year. What happens next uh, for Beresford he's not even sure. You know when you're 27 and you've waited this long to get here will this be as one and only shot maybe if it is I think he's okay with that and he'll be ready to move on with the next stage of his life if not maybe there's another chance maybe it's another season there have been guys who have been late bloomers so to speak debuted late according to everyone else's clock Just missed outside ball one another long inning for Clevenger and this has been the, the issue for him when it comes to that starting role. Well it all comes down to throwing strikes yeah. 15 uh, strikes 32 you know out of 32 pitches. There's a strike. There's the, it's nothing harder than, as a pitcher when you're young that you fall behind big league hitters. You may get away with it in the minor leagues but a lot of times you're not going to get away with it in the major leagues because they're going to make you consistently throw strikes. And if you don't then uh, when you make a mistake they're going to hurt you but do you give them free, free base runners. It's just a matter of time. That 
that time he called a strike. First pitch he didn't. That time he did. It was very similar to the first pitch. Take a look at this in our Indiana Wesleyan University pitch tracker right there. That was a good pitch. Just a little knees. better, yeah. Literally the width of one ball. Better. Yeah, that's true. Well, that's the difference up here. <laughs> and the hitter's good enough to recognize it. Rip. Foul. Yeah, so many of these major league hitters, Dozier, the guy on deck, Joe Maurer, they they just know that ball is a ball width off the plate. I'm not going to swing at it. Maybe in the minor leagues they don't and they chase it. And it's an easy out. They haven't developed the strike zone discipline. Yeah, the discipline up here that hitters have is tremendous. Now the one two. In off the dish. Two balls, two strikes. And Dozier got a piece of that. Stays alive. Two balls, two strikes. Want to send along some happy birthday wishes tonight to Ferris Ole, who is celebrating birthday number 102. Oh my goodness! In Tiffin, Ohio. Congratulations! No kidding. On the same day, his great granddaughter Harper Braley is celebrating her third. Wow! Happy birthday! Congratulations! Now the 2 2. Tied him up, struck him out. And the inning is over. So Mike Clevenger gets out of trouble, gives up a home run to Sano. We are tied at one after two. By Levin Furniture. Mike Napoli, new career highs and homers, runs batted in. He's going to play in the most games he's ever played in, in his career, so that stands to reason he'll get more at bats. Napoli walked his first time up, takes a little high ball one. One ball, one strike. Napoli and Carlos Santana have combined for 62 home runs and 164 runs batted in. 
I pop is this in play let's take a look Mauer to the dugout. Yes he makes the catch. One down and we'll go back to the studios for an in game update with Al Pulaski. Yeah, they've already taken a starting pitcher out. So the Tigers are already into their bullpen in the second inning of that game. Three home boy, runs. Oh boy, you come off the disable. It's not a good team to face. The Baltimore Orioles. I could think of a lot more if you're a little face. rusty. No <laughs> kidding. Pitch outside, one and one. Foul right back. Santana with an infield single in the first inning and loaded the bases up. But the Indians could not cash in. A little low. Two and two. He shot that one the other way foul. Indians have won nine, lost eight head to head with Minnesota this year. This is the final installment of the Indians Twins series this year. They'll wrap it up tomorrow with an afternoon game. And the 3 2 popped him up. In from right field, making the catch is Max Kepler, two down. And to the plate, Jose Ramirez. It was 70 degrees at game time here in Minneapolis. One of those perfect clear blue sky yeah. days. No humidity. <laughs> Lots of folks uh, throughout downtown walking around with their gopher gear on heading to see the University of Minnesota. Yeah, the Vikings new stadium they won't be playing in it tomorrow they'll be playing in it next week huh. Yeah though they open with the uh, the cheese heads yeah. Green, Bay Green Bay Packers will Packers, come to town. Right. There's a goal for a. <laughs> the one two. Rip to left. That'll get down and go. To the warning track where it's cut off by Rosario. His throw way offline, and Ramirez with an easy two out double. Well, that's 38 for Jose. You know, he goes down and hits breaking balls down low as well as anybody. This one he picked on a fastball that was down. He's trying to run it down and in. He just picked out a, about a seven iron and a nice line drive into left field. He can cruise in the second easily. Well, another two out RBI chance for Brandon Geyer. <laughs> 1 1 game here in the third. Ah. And a strike from Hector Santiago.
Kurt Suzuki wants to go chat with that runner at second base. Yeah, speaking of the uh, football season and the, the Gophers, it reminds me of that at the time we were here at the end of the season, the last uh, weekend of the season. We had a Saturday afternoon game. The Metrodome you're talking about? Yeah, there's a bloop that might. No, it won't get down. It's going to hang up. Dozier's going to make the catch. And the inning is over. No runs ahead. A man stranded 1 1, middle of the third. ice cream but right now it's time to remind you that coming up later in the game it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. Now if those guys ever come up with a way of delivering an ice cream flavored beer <laughs> look out. <laughs> Joe Maurer flied to left in the first. You know that that place uh, out in spring training over there in uh, Glendale they got a thing uh, it's like an adult root beer float like it's a one of those uh, alcoholic root beers. Oh yeah. Ice cream. Oh, oh my. Where at the ballpark or is it at a restaurant? No at the Glendale at the. Uh, oh. You know, the hockey West, and all Westgate. That's that. Westgate. Yeah, Westgate. Yeah. Whew. A root beer float that makes you float. I'm <laughs> <laughs> gonna need an Uber. 2 0 fastball in there for a strike. Kyle Crockett getting loose for Cleveland. As Clevenger. Delivers the pitch. Santana with the backup and the flip. One down. Well, the injury report brought to you by the attorneys at Elk and Elk. Clayton Kershaw coming off the DL, went three innings last night, gave up a couple of runs. By the way, and forget about Steven Strasburg, Jose Fernandez was the old Jose Fernandez last night. Boy, was he ever. 14 punch outs. Total. I mean, how, you know, you think about the guy who was in Cleveland, and remember, he was at a loss after that game. He was standing in his locker. Well, he had like, everything I, he threw when it comes to fastballs, yeah. everything. He was just, he's like, I don't know what to tell you. They just, they hit everything I threw. Well, that's the difference between him at home and on the road. He's tremendous at home. Yeah. Hard to understand. He was throwing 97 98 last night. I saw it. I mean, I was watching it going, that's the guy we thought we were going to see in Cleveland. 
but the Indians turned him around. Speaking of turning it around, Mike Clevenger. He's throwing strikes again. And he's retired three in a row. Two of those three by strikeout. T Mobile, greater coverage of baseball. There you go, seven. Three hits. 14 punches. And look what he did against the Indians. Five and two thirds, a dozen hits. That's never happened before. Yeah, that was the career. most he's ever given up. You could see what, what his numbers were at home. They're staggering. But remember, Archie, it was just last inning we were showing Mike Clevenger and he was 50 50 ball strikes. Right. He was even below. He's gotten a little better. Well, uh, if he could throw strikes, that's the key. One and two the count. You know when he first came up uh, when he had that game against Cincinnati I remember him throwing a curveball. I haven't seen many curveballs from him tonight or recently. I don't know if he canned it or what. But I really like that pitch. I mean blew it right by him. He's retired four straight and a one two three third for Clevenger. One one ball game after three. Has given the Indians three innings of work. He's allowed one run on the way he finished that last inning. He might stay out for another. Coco Chris leading off for the second time tonight. He let off the second inning with a walk. But was stranded at third base. Inside 2-0. Two and one. Popped in the air, center field. In comes Buxton. One away. <laughs> the $13 district ticket presented by Sports Time Ohio is back and includes your first drink. You can grab some friends and catch a game from the corner and the New drink rails out in left field. District tickets are only available online at Indians.com slash district ticket. And we are dwindling down. We're getting ready to come home for our last homestand. Yeah. And uh, it's hard to believe it's going to be the last homestand. Got the Tigers coming in. Yeah, it's at the three uh, team trip. We'll have Detroit. We'll have an off day on Monday. We'll have Kansas City coming in for three. 
on Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and close it out with the Chicago White Sox. All central all the time the rest of the way. The one one. Roller to second. Dozier has an easy play two down. Well there's a look at it. Uh, we will finish tomorrow we'll wind up here in Minnesota head to Chicago for four. Then back home for our final home stand. Monday is off. And we end the year with four in Detroit and three in Kansas City. The magic number as of right now is what 17. That is correct sir. So magic number hope. goes down one with every Indians right win one with every Tigers loss. We hope we can get that down. Wouldn't that be nice to do it at home if you had an opportunity. Absolutely. That would be great. Last time the Indians clinched the Central Division title was at home in 07. Last time they punched their ticket to the playoffs was right here yes. in Minnesota uh, yeah, we on the final day of the season. They ended up winning their last 10 in a row. Yeah, that was fun here that day. 0 2 pitch. And Davis out looking. The Indians go 1 2 3. Middle of the fourth, still tied at one. Flashback. Final day of the regular season in 2013. Ubaldo Jimenez got the start. Justin Masterson finished it off as the Indians beat the Twins for their 10th straight win to end the season and clinch the American League wild card berth. It was a terrific run for that bunch in the month of September. Unfortunately, it was just a one and done as they would draw the Tampa Bay Rays in the wild card game. And they lost that game at home. Miguel Sano rips it foul. Got a chunk of Roberto Perez on its way back. Upstairs, he missed one and two. 
Miguel Sano with a big home run to the bullpen and left center. His 23rd of the year in the second inning. And that tied the game Good up. Pitch. There's strike three called. Good pitch. Three straight hitters have struck out against Mike Clevenger. Well, I'll tell you what, this is going to be our Circle K strikeout. Down, away. That's where you want your fastball. Beautiful pitch at the knees. He couldn't pull the trigger. And I mean, that is that is a well located fastball. That's the best pitch in baseball right there. A low dart. Outside corner. There's not much you could do with that one. Levenger in a bit of a groove right here. He's retired five in a row. Four of the five by strikeout. Only guy to put the ball in play was Joe Mauer, who grounded out to start the third inning. Rosario way There's out in front. Nice curve ball. And a foul back. He's in the hole one and two. Percy Garner now getting loose in the Cleveland pen. Fastball took off up and away. Two balls two strikes. And I mean, he is just overpowering Minnesota hitters. Man, it's almost like it took him a little while to get loose. And then all of a sudden, he's he's found his uh, his uh, arm slot or whatever because he's throwing that fastball and he's hitting his spots very well. You can see him; he is picking it up and getting better. A lot of it has been that fastball as well. Commanding it. Little curveball. That one uh, took him a while to start throwing tonight, but he's got it back uh, back in there. Mike Clevenger out of Jacksonville, Florida. Came to the Indians by way of the Angels. In the Vinny Pistano deal. That was uh, an August tour trade. You know, we always talk about those waiver wire deals that happen after the trading deadline. The 1 1 popped up. Might be playable here. Santana. And now run into by Geyer, but Carlos hangs on. And another one, two, three inning for Mike Clevenger, who has set down seven in a row. One, one through four.
Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by Levin Furniture. For the best deals on furniture and mattresses, shop Levin's. And by Bank of America. Life's better when we're connected. One wall on top of the fifth inning now. Ground ball to second base. And Jason Kipnis retired. Seems like both starters have settled in. I'm not sure if Clevenger's coming back out, but. I, my guess is Arch four innings is probably as much as Terry Francona could have hoped for. Yeah. Well, yeah. He's done fine, man. Two hits. The one home run. Retired his last seven. That's the thing is as, as much as he's in a groove right now you're almost tempted to say well heck let him go. But that's their job down there to, to know. Yeah they're staying right now. He's going to make another start in Chicago now so. Francisco Lindor drove in the Indians only run on the first inning. Yeah the Indians had this guy on the ropes in the first two innings they left five stranded they couldn't get. Or take advantage of uh, their situation. They had three hits in the first. They still loaded the bases. No, I'm sorry, they didn't. They had three walks in the second and couldn't score. Stat of the game brought to you by Buick. Pedro has been on fire. Speaking of uh, singles and hitters, he's been locked in for a while too. I'd like to send along happy birthday, Ray Mathis, turning 86 from Evansville, Tennessee. Ray, happy birthday to you. Lindor lifts one out of play to the right. Down low. A ball and two strikes. Lifted to shallow right field. The second baseman Dozier settles under it. Well, uh, tonight after the game, it's uh, UFC 203 on pay per view. Cleveland's own Stipe Miosic will go up against Alistair Overeem defending his UFC World Heavyweight title. Contact your satellite provider, your cable operator. I'll get the details. You can still sign up for uh, this big event. Web. Uh, CM Punk going to make uh, his way into the ring as well. Find somewhere to go watch that after our games. Are. Yeah, well, they didn't give it time. Is there how many fights around before that one? Oh, I'm sure there's a few. Napoli sends one to left. One, two, three, go the Indians. And all of a sudden, for Santiago, has to retire seven straight. New pitcher for the tribe coming in when we come back.
He's rooting for the twins. <laughs> How about that shot? That's phenomenal. Yeah, it is. Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen for the Indians for Percy Garner. Mike Clevenger started off a little shaky, finished strong. Four yeah. innings, only one run on two hits, struck out five. He did. He finished. Uh, it was a good start for him tonight. Going his four innings. Garner coming on for the fourth time. Percy's got James Beresford to lead it off. Down low, ball one. Paul Molitor said earlier this week once in a while someone needs to be rewarded for everything they've done. And that's essentially what they're doing with James Beresford. After. Being a. A solid player fundamentally sound. Getting a chance to realize the dream of a lifetime after. Spending a decade over a thousand games in the minor leagues. You know, he's one of those guys too. I think about Dwayne Kuyper. You know, everybody says, "Well, he's only hit four home runs." Well, you know, home runs aren't everything. If the right. guy can play defense and he can hit for a decent average, maybe there's a place for him. Obviously, the Twins would have a better feel on this if they felt he could really help their club. He'd have been up here a long oh, time ago. Oh, no so. question, no question. But it's nice that uh, you know they that throwing that uh, loyal soldier a bone man where yeah they, you know give I guess him an opportunity that's why I said it's a right. classy move by the organization my point is it's not like this guy was hitting 220 his whole career in the right. minors you know, he put up good solid average just not well, much you know and, and that's part of a you know baseball not everybody makes it to the major leagues you know there's a <laughs> lot of guys that fall along the wayside that, that, that never even sniff it this guy you know persistence you know he, he Played numerous years in the minor leagues, and that's part of the that's part of the game, man. Some guys are organizational players; they retire early, they become coaches, and they do something if they want to stay in the game. I know you didn't spend a lot of time in the minor leagues, but I'm sure you saw guys who had talent, but just didn't have the drive to stick yeah. it out to make I it. Mean, right? You see all kinds of uh, players down there. You see guys that you think are going to be great players, and they just had. You know, be their bad attitudes or the desire wasn't there, and you're thinking, my goodness, this guy's wasting a lot of good talent. You know, the, you, you see what separates the men from the boys when you're out on your own and you're you're fighting for your life down there. You don't know anybody. And two balls, two strikes, the pitch. Well, think about this for an example. Because you're, you're talking roughly the same age guys a lot of times in the minors, especially kids that go right from high school. Urban Meyer was saying the other day that he had a kid who, who right now is a star linebacker. Name escapes me. But mom basically told him to get his butt back to school. He was ready to quit. Yeah. Because as a freshman, he's looking up at the depth chart. He's third, fourth string, and all these guys are in front of him. And he's thinking, man, I'm, I'm never going to play. I'm never going to get a chance. He's a long way from home. Yeah, and it was mom who said get your butt back to school. Yeah. You stick it out. Well, you start feeling sorry for yourself. You know, you're not around and, you, and that's what you need sometimes a, a, a kick in the pants, but you know. Same thing had happened in the minors where you're a long way from home. You're on your own and it's you're lonely. Like, you're thinking man, a major league seems like going to the moon yeah. in a rocket ship probably. Well, you can't feel sorry for yourself. That's for sure. But it's all part of the process of learning. You see if you want it bad enough, you see what's uh, inside of you. And what how you are as a person how your parents raise you. A lot is involved. Two down here in the fifth Brian Dozier is 0 for 2 he is grounded out he is struck out.
One one pitch. Oh Garner with a good off speed. Oh he didn't go though says first base on Brian Blackney. Tough one to lay off it looks good coming in and all of a sudden it just darts right down. Did he go there you go let's go. Oh yes. oh yeah. Yes he did. Usually that gets the right hand in the air for the umpires. Two and two the count. There's a little emergency swing right there from Dozier to just get a piece of it and stay alive. Double barrel action in yeah. the tribe pin. See it backed up, man. Chip and Crockett. Crockett was up earlier. I would imagine he's up in case Maurer gets to the plate. So let's see. The 2 2. Full count. Good idea. I mean, he almost chased after that breaking ball earlier in the at bat. Yeah, but once a hitter sees it and he recognizes it, that, you know, this is where the big leagues we were talking about guys' discipline that they see it once, a lot of times they can lay off of it. Not everybody. Let's see what happens. 3 2. He challenged him and struck him out with a good sinking fastball. And the inning is over. Dozier's saying. The ball hit the ground. He's arguing. Out comes Paul Molitor. But the inning is over as Percy Garner punches out a pair. to you by your local Toyota dealers. Indians got on the board in the first. A sack fly by Francisco Lindor leads the league in that category. Got his 70th run batted in. Minnesota tied it in the second. 23rd homer of the year for Miguel Sano, his 60th RBI. Since then, it's been a pitcher's duel. Hector Santiago has put up four straight zeros. And Mike Clevenger and Percy Garner have now combined to retire. 10 in a row. Yep. He has settled down, hasn't he? Just one hit in the third inning. They had their opportunities in the first two. Could only muster one run. He had four walks in the first two innings. And then something clicked and tightened up. Brown ball trying to beat the shift. Dozier off balance throw bounces it twice and still gets him out. 
We are seeing that more and more by infielders. And you know Lindor is the one guy that we see do it a lot. But when they're going away from first base and they're on that side of the infield you can see him bounce it. This one was two. Two times that it bounced but it's a much easier play for that first baseman. You don't have to jump and throw it as hard as you can. You can be much more accurate if you just get it in the zone. Two pitches two outs. It's nine in a row retired by Santiago. Brandon Geyer over two to the plate. Yeah the, the missed opportunities point that first inning they had him loaded with one out Ramirez Geyer back to back fly to center. In the second inning they had back to back walks to open the frame Rajay at the plate and then bang double play ball. Kipnis then walks they had first and third two outs and Lindor grounded out to end the inning. Well like we say and you hear, you hear us talk about it many times that that starter could you don't let him settle in. Geyer finds a hole. Second time the Indians have had a two out. Bases empty hit Ramirez had one in the third. Now Geyer here in the sixth. It'll bring up Coco Crisp. He walked in the second inning fly to center his last time up. I think about Coco and I suddenly kind of drift back and, and think about Kenny Lofton you know when he came back to the Indians in 07 after all that time away it was sort of at the end of his career and with Coco Crisp not that this is the end of, the, of his career I would think he's still got more opportunities ahead of him but it's similar in that you you come up you, you have all your initial all your first happen with an organization then you go away for a while and you come back and so much has changed. Yeah that's true. You look around like where are all the guys I used to play with it. They're all gone. Well, man. You know when you start getting to these guys ages like Coco and the guys that have been you know their mid 30s mm -hmm. around there. The, you know everything changes quickly. Organization a lot of young players now. Yeah there was a time when Coco was Jason Kittness Francisco Lindor when he yeah. was the young on the rise player. Unfortunately it was a deal that just it didn't work out for the Indians. Checked his swing slow roller the shortstop Polanco goes to first and a really nice backhanded pick by Joe Maurer ends the inning. No runs ahead a man left middle of the sixth we are still deadlocked at one.
best perks, including savings and access to Tribe Rewards. And today's Tribe Rewards TV code is Tito. Visit Indians.com season tickets for complete details. Tito, how about him? Over his last 12 seasons as a manager, he has only had one losing September slash October. He is. His team seemed to play much better in the second half, and they're off to another good start in September this year. Joe Maurer will lead off for Minnesota here in the bottom of the sixth in a 1 1 game. Percy Garner with a 1 2 3 fifth inning. And a strike to the outside corner. Archie, go back to the days of Eric Wedge, and the Indians always seemed to be a better team as the season wore on. Better yeah. team in the yeah. second half late in yeah. the year. They always seem to play better. I don't know what it is about this Indians bunch. This year, though, it was nice to see. A, a monster June. That's what propelled this club, the 14 game winning streak. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, you get uh, 22 wins in the month of June. And Andre that, and I were talking about this last night, Rick. I don't know about you. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. We're a little tired of hearing people say, well, if you take away the 14 game win streak, hey, you know what? You can't take it away because it actually <laughs> happened. 14 game win. You win 22 games in a month. That's, I mean, everything has to go your way. They pitch great. They they hit great. But I'll tell you what, they've played solid baseball all year long. I mean, people want you to be perfect now. This is not a perfect game. They this is the only team you're watching in baseball that has not lost four games in a row this year. The only team. Right. So you know, for regardless of one month, they've been consistent all year long. You know, for a team that was not supposed to do much, that you know they they hung in there in April. I think that was their only losing month. They were 10 and 11. They went 16 and 13 in May, 22 and 6 in June, 500 in July. They're two games over in August. They're four games over here in September. Come on. What more do you have to do? I mean, Andre, they've well, basically won six out of every 10 all season. Well, the other stat that I go off of, I love the 14 game winning streak, but you guys have made this point quite clear also is the fact that they haven't lost four games in a row. Yeah. Every other team has done that. And I think the consistency that this team has played for over this period of time should hush the naysayers. Well, they can say whatever they want. We're with these guys every day. You know, the goal is to get to the playoffs. And it's a different season. It doesn't matter how many games you win during the season. It's get to the playoffs and get yourself set up and you can win your division. That way you'll have a series. You won't have to have a play-in game. Well, when you start a series, three gamer or four gamer, whatever the case may be, they're 29 and 18, and that's always big. You, you win that Split first game, game one, yes, gives you kind of an edge going in, especially for most of the year. The way the Indians have they 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 done things is that that you have to do to be successful. Win at home, win in your division, you know. Charging hard, can't get there though. Not Roger. this time. Plays it on a hop and a couple of flares, but they count. Two on, one out. And now Big Miguel Sano to the plate. Well, here you go. It's off the end of the bat. And Davis made a sliding catch earlier in the ball game. He wasn't going to get there. He knew it. But he tried a little decoy there. But the base runner wasn't buying it. He, he did a nice job of continuing to go. And you finally get that read eventually before it falls. It looks like Tito's going to make a move and Garner will be out of this ball game after back to back singles. Percy retired four straight. Gives up a couple of uh, weak blue pits. Not much he can do about that. Timeout. Jeff Manship's coming on when we come back.
uh, Friday night. It'll be another Sugardale Dollar Dog Night. The Detroit Tigers will kick off our final homestand at Cleveland. It'll be a big three-game series there. Come on out and enjoy it. Good baseball. Try and cut down that magic number and eat your dollar dogs. Go to Indians.com for tickets. Now well, here's Jeff Manship with two on and one out. Last couple of times out. He's been knocked around a bit. Inning in the third, four runs, four hits. Such is the life sometimes of a relief pitcher. You can go a month and not allow a run. You go a couple of outings and give up four or five, and that's going to make your numbers jump up, and people are going to say, what's wrong with so-and-so? Well, right now for Jeff Matchup, he'd love to get a ground ball and turn a double play and get out of the inning. What is going on? I tell you, it's the third time they've called time out before he can even throw a pitch. You know, with Perez, a young catcher, and you know he's working with a lot of different pitchers. You, you got to get on the same page. And I mean, he makes a lot of visits to that mound, and I'm just thinking to myself, you know, there's a lot of pressure put on this kid having to go out there every day and catch. And uh, he just wants to make sure he gets it right. Can't blame him for that. Exactly. You know, because who's going to get blamed? You, you know, you put down the wrong finger, or people say, or the pitcher doesn't execute his pitch. You know, he's going to get blamed for calling. So you better you better make sure you're on the same page with that guy. Way outside, one and one. With the runner at second base. And remember, when the Twins came to Cleveland in early August, they absolutely tortured the Indians the way they swung the bats. Oh, so I think they're making a very concerted effort when there are runners, in particular at second base, to make sure they're not somehow picking up the signals or relaying signs to the hitters. And that might have something to do with all the yeah, various uh, that's trips. I, I look at base runners when I'm sitting up here watching the game. This is Blanc was a young player. And, you know, a lot of times I don't think young players really get into it yet, but that guy was one of the best in his day, Molitor. And I, I do see Polanco staring in. And I, I look for hitters to tip it and see if they do anything different. No, 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 no. Oh, man. Close pitch. Surprise Sano able to lay off. Three and one. Well, he's had good patience right here. That's a good pitch, but he he didn't pull the trigger. So now Manship's got to throw a decent pitch here. Sano's licking his chops, saying, "Come on, to Papa, let's go." He's looking for one pitch he likes to drive. He walked it. Now they're loaded. And Eddie Rosario will be the batter. Rosario singled in the second, struck out in the fourth. Him up back out of play. Your manship has come in to a ball game and has inherited 32 runners, eight have scored. He comes in this inning with two more, and he walked the first guy, so he's gonna he's gonna need some, some help here. 
Swung out and missed. It's 0 and 2. Now keep in mind, even though the count is 0 and 2, with runners in scoring position this year, only four times have hitters struck out in 48 plate appearances. Wow. And this is where he would love to yeah, get a strike. Well, I'd have to go back down with that breaking ball in the dirt. Allen got this guy to go after it last night on a breaking ball down. He looks uh, to ex there you go. Good try. One ball, two strikes. Again in the dirt, no chase, two and two. If you're Rosario you're almost wondering if I see it spinning I'm not swinging because he's not throwing it for a strike it's a chase pitch. Tops it. Santana's coming home. Good throw in time. That's good. Good play. He only had the one out to get and, and actually Perez ended up acting like a first baseman there. You just keep your foot on the plate and as a base runner when you're coming down the line you're, you're taught to come in and slide and take that foot out so he can't turn a double play. This wasn't hit hard enough and I don't think anybody was going to get it first. But I mean that's a legal slide. And he just got to he had to stay on the on the plate. Archie slid off the back almost like off the back heel with the spike and I wonder if maybe he didn't get spiked right on the back heel there. Well he, he had to keep his foot on the plate. He did. They get the second out which is a very big out there. Roberto appears to be a OK. But Manship's not out of the woods yet. Base is still loaded two down and Kurt Suzuki is the batter. Sets a low outside target and it's off the dish. Ball one. Suzuki 0 for 6 so far in the series. In the air. Deep right. Geyer sprinting back. Makes the catch. And the inning is over. So the Indians dodge a bullet here in the sixth inning as Minnesota leaves them loaded. And we'll head to the seventh, tied at one.
Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by Ford, built Ford tough. By the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk, proud partner of the Cleveland Indians, call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. And by Adventure, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, Ram. One one as you take a look in at per at the target field that was the right field entrance just beyond the target center home of the Minnesota Timberwolves Percy Garner Jeff Manship exchange a high five as they combine to keep Minnesota from scoring and we stay deadlocked dead one apiece. Back out of play. Roberto Perez rips one high in the air. Deep left center back is Buxton right in front of the wall for out number one. Well he hit this ball about as well as you can hit it. He picked on the biggest part of the ballpark though that's the unfortunate thing you see Buxton going back getting onto the track and right before the fence he will make the catch it put it away for out number one. Rajay Davis scored the only run for Cleveland back in the first. Boy, it didn't take long. They came out like gangbusters tonight. He doubled, kept a single, sack fly by Lindor, but they left them loaded. With only one out, didn't score. That first two out in the second inning didn't score there, and that's been a recurring theme. Hector Santiago settled in after that, and he's just shut him down. Off the end of the bat, a second baseman Dozier, two away. Well, Jeff Manship came into a bit of a tough spot. Gets a force out at the plate. Gets a fly ball out. And the Minnesota Twins left the bags loaded. Manship came on two a one with one out walked the first guy face so they were loaded with only one out but he was able to navigate the minefield. Yeah the twins 0 for three tonight with the runners in scoring position the tribe two for seven. They were three for twelve last night. It's been it's been a tough find here on the road hasn't it hitting with runners in scoring position. Yes indeed. By the way, the Minnesota's only run coming on a home run by Miguel Sano. And at the time I mentioned Mike Clevenger had a homerless streak of uh, 17 innings. Rich Hill had a homerless streak of 62 innings. Is he still pitching or is he hurt again? I He's know he got pitched a one. Perfect game through six tonight. He's pitching tonight for the Dodgers down yeah. in Miami. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Dodgers are up four zip. And Jason Kipnis finds himself with a two ball two strike count.
Santiago hasn't had many good outings since coming over to Minnesota, but he's he's pitched well against the Indians his last two times now. Yeah, he sure has. This gives him uh, let's see, what, six and a third. So now six and two thirds, and he has not allowed a run. Well, he's given up one run total. So six and six is twelve. Thirteen innings. In his last two starts against Cleveland, giving up just one run. Yeah, eight hits and just the one run. Right. Another one, two, three inning. Stretch time in Minnesota. One one. Indians fans can secure postseason, or I should say priority access for postseason tickets to any game at Progressive Field by purchasing season tickets for next year. You'll get opening day priority access to drive rewards and more. Indians.com slash postseason or call the Indians at 216-420 hits. Sean Armstrong, the new pitcher for the tribe. He is the fourth Indians pitcher to work here tonight. And James Beresford making his major league debut here this evening will lead it off and takes a strike. Beresford bounced into a fielder's choice in the second tap one back to the mound. His last time up. And out of play. Down in the dirt. Gentleman with the mustache and the glasses, that's his father. Well, Two over to his right is mom. He's probably got brothers and sisters, and, and they're hoping they see his first major league hit. Out of play. Like most young players that get an opportunity to get their major league start, they swing at that first pitch in their first at bat <laughs> just like he did. You've been waiting all this time. I'm not waiting any longer. As soon as you see the baseball, you start swinging. He is the 30th Australian major leaguer. 
And remember the Twins had Grant Balfour at yeah, one time who right. was a phenomenal late inning reliever. Went on to be a terrific closer with Oakland and uh, Tampa. They've uh, they've kind of had a little pipeline. Liam Hendricks. There's a ball up the middle, and James Beresford has his first major league hit. Good hey. aim, mate. <laughs> yeah, he'll take that baseball to put it out of play. <laughs> awesome moment. Yeah, congratulations. He hit a slider from Armstrong. It's a special moment for anybody that gets their first major league hit, but when you've traveled as long and as far as he has, a little extra special, I think. Yeah, I'm sure he has room for that in the trophy case. Byron Buxton squared around early, popped it straight up, but back over the screen. Bunts it back to the mound. Armstrong takes the out at first, and Kitten has wow. barely got out of the way. No kidding, man. He had a little gas on that one. Take it easy. Well, they get the sacrifice. They move the runner. Now they have opportunities. And throw to first base. Put Kittness in harm's way. He had to get out of the way. Now the top of the order. And Brian Dozier, so what do you do, Arch? You walk him and go after Maurer? Boy, no, I don't. I don't. Let's go down to Andre Knott. Well, since August 1st, when Andrew Miller became a Cleveland Indian, the Indians' bullpen has been a strength for the team. They've had a 3.05 ERA. They've held opponents to a batting average of 222. They have an 8-1 record. They're 11 out of 12 in save opportunities, and they have 138 strikeouts and 127 innings pitched so far in this month. Yeah, the bullpen has been a strength, no doubt about it, but that's what they're doing, man. They're going to walk... Uh... They're going to walk him intentionally, and then I'm sure he'll go to the bullpen for the left-hander. Is Crockett still up throwing? He was up early today. And he's still up, and I'm sure Crockett's going to come in and face Maurer. So that's exactly what they're going to do. Put uh, Dozier on. And like you said, they flip-flopped the lineup today where they put Maurer second. He was hit third yesterday. Polanco was hit second. So Armstrong's going to come in, and he's going to face... Just three hitters. So there's the intentional pass to Dozier. And here comes Terry Francona. And we'll take a timeout for a pitching change. Lefty on lefty when we come back.
score. And the bullpen is certainly getting its work in here in this series already. Yes, they are. And it's another tough uh, second straight inning. They've got a tough situation to work out. Last inning was bases loaded, one out. Manship navigated it. Got a ground ball and a fly ball inning over. This time around, it's first and second, one out. And Kyle Crockett on to face Joe Maurer. Now, Maurer's 0 for 3 tonight, 1 for 7 in the series. But anytime this guy's at the dish, it's problematic. Well, you remember last night when they had a man on first base and he was up and he, he hit into a double play ball where Lindor was covering and the guy was running and it was just a, a perfectly designed play. They got the double play to get out of the inning. But uh, I would think that uh, Crockett's on for this guy right here. We'll see. Low ball one. He should be properly warmed up. He's been throwing a ton of boy there. has he ever. He's just going to make you throw strikes. He, you know, but I think Crockett thought he had one there. Yeah, that looked pretty good. But when you're Joe Maurer up there, maybe a little low. Yeah. It was. Perez tried to pull that ball up. He's going to make you get in the zone. He's in, in no hurry. He's just a patient hitter. He's not afraid to go deep in the count, and he's not afraid to hit with two strikes. Got one by him there. It's two and one. Took a shot there at really trying to hit one out of here. You don't see him do this much. He went uh, for a big fly right there. Had the count in his favor. He took his shot. And strike two called. Jorge Polanco waiting on deck. As Crockett about to deliver a crucial pitch right here. And a foul back out of play. You know, Rick, from the center field camera, it almost w appears that Maurer's front foot is a little bit open in the stance. Right. But we had that shot from behind home plate, and it looked like his feet were straight even. up. Yeah, it was. It might I, be I just agree. the camera angle that gives the appearance. It is. I think it is. And that's why sometimes when you think the ball's on the outside corner, that camera angle so far off, it's really not. He is, I think, just straight. He squared up. Yeah, he's squared up. He's not open. There's Good a pitch. great pitch, and he really reached back for a little something extra. Threw it by him. Maurer could not react. All he could do was watch it go by. Well, I'll tell you, this is a great sequence for Crockett. He fell behind him early, even though his second pitch was a good pitch. It was close, but it was low. So now it's 2-0. Maurer's going to take a shot at the pump, and he misses it. And then he comes right back with another fastball, and he didn't mess around with a slider. He fouled off the fastball and came back in good pitch high enough this time. He didn't mess around with the slider. He stayed all heat. He gets the strikeout. Job well done for Crockett. Yes, it is. But it's one and done for him, and now Zach McAllister is on when we return.
Trying to, trying to find a jacket that fits. Well, I'll tell you what, nice job tonight, Kyle. You got a very tough hitter. And now, you know, when you're a hired gun to come in and get one here, you do your job, it's no big deal, and everything looks good. But when you don't, then you, you know, you, yep. everything gets thrown upon you. So now he hands the ball over to McAllister to see if he can get the final out here in the seventh inning and keep it a 1 1 game. Zach McAllister ready, he deals, and it's inside ball one. Jorge Polanco has walked, struck out, and singled tonight. He was forced out at home last inning, and Minnesota had the bases loaded. Bloop. Shallow left. Lindor runs it down, and the inning is over. So the Tribes' bullpen rescues them from further trouble tonight once again. Seven in the books, still deadlocked, though, at one. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Now, oh, come on, Chris. It's not that bad. 1 1, eighth inning. New pitcher for Minnesota, Ryan Presley. Hector Santiago went seven, gave up one run. Yeah, another nice start against the Indians, but tonight nothing to show for it. Just a good, a good outing. He gave up that run back in the first inning, and it didn't take long. And that's he settled in nicely. Presley pitched in the ball game last night. He gave, uh, pitched an inning, gave up a hit, and he also walked a batter. He's got the meat of the lineup here. Lindor, Napoli, Santana. Anybody God. reaches Ramirez. Yeah, routine bouncer to second base. One down. Let's go to the studios for an in-game update without Pulaski. Wow. Well, Rich Hill has had the the issues with the blister on his hand and stuff, so he went his seven innings. You can't push it. Mike Napoli looks at a strike and he looks at Rick ever, Carapaza. I wonder if there's ever been a uh, combined perfect game. And if there has, when was the last one? I don't think I so. I know no hitters, but I don't uh, recall any I don't, combined yeah. perfect games. I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> 
I'm sure they would have told us about it. <laughs> we would have heard about. Right. Well, you yeah, would have heard yeah. about it. Yeah, you sure would have. Seven innings. He's under 100 pitches too. They took him out of there. But like you said, yeah. I mean, they're in control. He, they're not gonna push him. Pop back out of play. Well, both teams with one run, five hits, no errors. Twins have left eight, Indians have left seven. We'll have to ask some of our uh, bullpen guys what would be more of a pressure cooker coming into a bases loaded jam with a game on the line, or here's the ball, it's a perfect game, don't screw it up. <laughs> well, that's, you know. <laughs> boy oh boy I don't know our Bases. starter just went seven perfect here your turn now and Mike Napoli's out looking good slider there by Presley and he, uh, he put it right on the outside corner he couldn't pull the trigger and he knew it was a good pitch watch well located there it is had nice sharp bite to it good tilt out number two. By the way, Baltimore laying waste to Detroit. 11 2 Orioles over the Tigers, and they're only in the sixth inning. Well, here's Carlos Santana, one for three on the night. Well, that's why you want to see the Indians get a run, take the lead in this game. Right back up the middle and off the glove of Dozier recovers and still throws him out. Man. One, two, three go the Indians yet again. That is four times in the last five innings. Where the Indians and Twins are tied up at one apiece. McAllister, first pitch to Max Kepler in there for a strike. Well, Rich Hill's perfect game was just broken up. He was already out of the game. Whenever you saw an update from Al, Joe Blanton came in, and with two outs, who else but Frenchie? Jeff Francoeur hits a line drive to short. Looked like Seeger had it, but it tipped off the 
edge of his glove and Base in the hit. left field. I think All they right. gave him a hit. Yeah, I'm sure they did. It's okay. That's over. We don't have to pay attention there. But when I looked up, I thought he was going to make the play arch. It looked like, oh, he's just going to reach up, kind of jump up and catch it. But it just tipped off his glove. And I'd love to hear what they're saying because Rich Hill, if looks could kill, oh yeah, he he might have wiped out half the stadium. He may be just upset at the circumstances more than yeah with anybody in particular. Here it's a 1 1 game. It's been crazy. I mean, the Indians scored in the first, Twins scored in the second. Since then, all about the pitching. Indians haven't had any opportunities since early in the game. Twins, their opportunities have all been in the last couple of innings. But the Indians' pitching has been real good here coming out of the bullpen. Club, Mike Clevenger started this game. He ended up going four innings and was really good striking out five and retiring the last seven in a row. Yeah he got better uh, as the game went along. He was crisp that fastball he really located his fastball much better in the third and fourth inning. Had it rolling. He had four strikeouts did walk two, only allowed two hits. Since then Percy Garner an inning and a third scoreless. Jeff Manship two thirds scoreless. Sean Armstrong one third scoreless. Kyle Crockett one huge out striking out Joe Maurer. And now Zach McAllister who has retired the only two he has faced. Now squaring off against Miguel Sano. Good fastball at 96 and above the belt you can see. So no, no way he could really get the barrel to it based on where that pitch was located. And that's a good spot to pitch him. Oh man was that perfect. Woo. McAllister that might be one of the best sequence of pitches we've seen him throw this year in terms of just pure location. That's perfect. Well, he elevated the fastball the pitch before. He may be thinking he's getting the same pitch, and he throws a dart on the outside edge. I love it when you can locate your fastball, man. When you can move in and out like that, the hitter's got no chance exactly. to react. I mean, when you have to cover all 17 inches of that plate, you're right. You can't cover it all. Right nice. back to oh, him. No, oh. it got through him. Through the Lindor. wickets. To the rescue, and the inning is over. The Twins go one, two, three. And now we turn to Jose Ramirez, who will lead off the ninth when we come back.
point your toe when you say when this one's finally over. What do you mean by that? I think he's thinking extra innings. No. No, we got to win it now. Al Pulaski, Jensen Lewis, they're coming up next. And I mean next. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't, he's not like Andre. They don't want to get the last word in. I think somebody cut their cord. They, they may have. <laughs> well, they're going to have to do it off uh, Kitzler, who is their closer, appearing for the 48th time this year. And the schedule hitters, Ramirez, Geyer, and Crisp. But Chisenhall comes into the on-deck circle. You see Coco with the bat in his hand behind him, so it looks like he'll bat. Switch hitter. Like Ramirez. Low it away, one and one. Ramirez did have a uh, two out double back in the third inning. Have to get that leadoff man aboard here. Down low, two balls and a strike. Now the two one offering right there, but he tops it to second base. And there's one away. Looking back at the keys to the game, courtesy of Mazda, Indians a woeful two for seven with runners in scoring position. And that all came in the first three. They haven't, they've had one base runner since. It's been a well played game defensively on both sides. Since the two out double by Ramirez in that third inning. As Chisinau swings and misses. Lonnie well, uh, has had 10 pinch hit appearances this year, one hit. And with that one hit, he drove in a pair of runs. I remember that game was back in Cleveland. Kinsler's 1 1. Oh boy. And Lonnie shoots it through the left side of the infield, and that gives the Indians their first base runner since Brandon Geyer with two outs singled in the sixth inning, and that's who Lonnie just pinch hit for. So that breaks up a string in which Minnesota pitchers had retired 17 out of 18 hitters. There's a nice swing. They were playing him up the middle, and he just stayed on it. That's exactly where that pitch was away. He waited long enough and just hit it where it was pitched. Gets the base hit. And now we'll see if Coco Crisp can deliver here. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. And a strike called. Bunce gets it down. Only play is at first. And the throw is in time. But now there are two outs. Well, I don't know if they're going to give him a sacrifice there, but he was trying to bunt for a base yeah. hit for the element of surprise. And he just didn't get it hard enough. It was the right idea to try and move Chisenhall, even though he does get into scoring position. He was going for the base hit there, is what he was doing. It's just the ball deadened right in front of yeah. the plate. It just didn't ever got going. You know, and, and back behind the plate, Suzuki, he jumped on it quickly. He, he wanted to, he, the right thought was in mind. He just didn't execute it, even though Chisholm Hall is on second base. Well, here's Tyler Naquin. He's been a last at bat hero for the Indians a few times this year, in particular at home. Of course, uh, at home, those are walk off situations here on the road, a chance to just give them the lead. 
In the ninth, Naquin takes low ball one. Tyler's just one for seven as a pinch hitter. Well, I always say for younger hitters, it's tougher for them to come up and pinch hit because half the time they don't know the pitchers that well to begin with. You know, once you, you get around the league and you get to know everybody, it's different. But boy, you got to get up there, see ball, hit it, and that's all you can do. And uh, if you take a page out of it, he had a chance to watch Chisholm Hall's at bat coming off the bench. You see what Lonnie did? Try and take him the other way. Stay on that sinker away. They're going to walk him. Okay. Go after the right handed hitting Rajay Davis. Okay. That makes sense. And Rajay, he, he let off the game with a double. But he's uh, his last three at bats. He's had a tough time. So now it's time to concentrate bear down here with first and second and two outs. So Rajay Davis with two on and two out. Doubled and scored the only run for Cleveland way back in the first. And that's outside ball one. Despite the ups and downs, Rajay has been one of the best clutch hitters for this team, hitting 301 on the year coming in with runners in scoring position. Now I remember earlier in the year it was he and Ramirez that was doing all the damage. You know, as far as runners in scoring position. Shoots this Fall. one to right field. Diving play is caught by Max Kepler. Oh, he just saved the game for the Twins right there. Yes, he did. It's a great catch. Ball slicing away from him, going towards the line, and he's going to have to leave his feet to go get it. And he does. That's extra bases, triple at least. Our Pat O'Brien play of the game. You just saw it. Yeah, that was a great catch. Kepler on the dead run. Man, that's do or die, baby. He makes the play, gets that final out, keeps it a 1 1 ball game. We can talk about defense. That can win games as well. Brian Shaw will be the new Indians pitcher. He's got the bottom third of the Twins order due up. 67th appearance on the year. 
Chris Jimenez is now behind the plate and Lonnie Chisnall is now in right. Ball one, it's outside. Two and oh. Kurt Suzuki's hit it in the air all three times tonight. And so far, he hasn't had to take the bat off his shoulder. Well, Brian Shaw pitched an inning last night, had a strikeout and zeros across the board. He walked him on four, four straight. straight. See what the Twins do here. Do they pinch run for Suzuki? They figure with all these extra guys. Yep, here you go. Logan Schaefer will be the pinch runner for Suzuki. And James Beresford to the plate. He's one for three tonight in his major league debut. The Australian got his first big league hit in his last at bat. Earlier in the game, he made a phenomenal play at third base, even though Santana beat it out for a single. He squares and pulls it up. Well, you, you have to take one. a strike here. I mean, even if you if even if you're bunny, because Shaw's thrown five straight balls. Maybe that's part of Brian Shaw's uh, success story, if you will, because when he gets runners on base when he gets traffic it seems like he gets better not well, the way you want to do it but well you know there's times and sometimes he comes out when he walks people and falls behind that's when he gets in trouble when he gets ahead of hitters he buries them now you see that's where as a hitter I still think he should take a strike but but if you're James Beresford in your first major league game oh, and they I put know. the bunt sign on. Oh, no, no. I understand. You, you got You're thinking more it. from a manager standpoint. Let him take till they throw a strike. Yeah. I mean, you can go around and fake bunt, but then, yeah. Sometimes the harder, the, you know, you're not swinging the bat, it's tougher for a pitcher to throw a strike. Indians looking for it now. Ramirez in at third. Bunts it down. Santana's only play at first. And now the winning run in the scoring position for Minnesota. Well, Beresford does his job. And Byron Buxton will have the first chance to be the hero for Minnesota tonight. Buxton is 0 for 1. He has walked and also sacrificed. One one ball game bottom of the night twenty three thousand five hundred eighty four twins fans on a beautiful night. And a first pitch strike. Now as I said when runners get in a scoring position this is where Shaw is at his best. Hitters are batting just 148 against him with runners in scoring position this year. That's 14th out of 173 qualified relievers. Chopped up the middle. Look out. Cut off by Lindor. Throw to first, and he got him two down. Schaefer to third on the play. Good range by Lindor. Yeah, it wasn't hit as hard as we thought. It looked like it was going to get through. It just wasn't hit hard enough. 
took that big hop and you know what it, it, it caught grass but gets the third it's different. But Lindor his range gets it on the one hop and you get the speedy Buxton at first base. So again same question as before Dozier's at the plate with Maurer on deck. They don't have a lefty up in the bullpen ready to come on to face Maurer but do you pitch to Dozier. Here? I, I yes yes you do. I would. Dozier is 0 for 3 tonight 1 for 7 in the series. That one hit a double Maurer 0 for 4 tonight 1 for 8 in the series his one hit a home run yesterday. Winning run at third two down the pitch to Dozier is a fastball strike that cutting action going away. Well, 17 at bats and that's why you pitched to him there it is the numbers I didn't have them in my in my hand but that's why slow chopper to third and Ramirez throws him out so Brian Shaw works around a leadoff walk and we got bonus baseball in Minneapolis tied at one. Extra innings are presented all season long by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Jack Link's Feed Your Wild Side. Extra frames. And the new Minnesota pitcher is left hander Buddy Bo Shears. 29th appearance of the year. He worked two thirds of a scoreless inning. Last night, giving up a hit, he also walked a batter. John Ryan Murphy takes over behind the plate. And for Cleveland, it'll be, it will be Kipnis, Lindor, and Napoli due up. Kipnis one for three tonight. One out of six in the series. Low and away, ball one. There's only been 11 hits in the ball game. Pitching's been pretty good today. Yeah, and three of those hits for Cleveland, three of their six came in the first inning. Yeah. Since that first inning, which the Indians scored their only run, a two-out double by Ramirez in the third, a two-out single by. Geyer in the sixth and a one out single in the ninth by pinch hitter Lonnie Chisnell. That has been it. Yeah, not many hits. You've got to take advantage of everything if they walk or something, but the bats have been silent. Right. 
And even though starter Hector Santiago was wild at the outset, he walked four in the first two innings. Twins haven't issued a walk other than the intentional pass yeah. to Naquin in the ninth inning. Yep. Oh man, what a pitch. Struck him out. Francisco Lindor playing some solid defense to keep the Indians in this tonight. Ran down that little flare. And after the ball got by, McAllister was able to gun him down at first. And then again, last inning. You know the amazing thing about him? Frankie hasn't even played two years in the big leagues yet. And you know what? You, you're taking him for granted because he's so good out there consistently playing defense. The ball sit. You, you expect the play to be made. Right back to him. He knocks it down. I don't know if he's okay, but throws him out. Didn't go away from him far enough. Looked like he had uh, he wanted to start panicking when that ball hit him. Well, Molitor's already made the move to the bullpen anyway with the right-handed hitting Mike Napoli coming up. He's not going to let Bo Shears face him. So with two down on the tenth, we've got a timeout tied at one. Making his eighth appearance of the year. Last night, he pitched one third of an inning with a walk, and that's been a problem for Wimmers. He's walked quite a few here of late. Last night, Mike Napoli hit a long home run. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Second longest uh, this year at the ballpark into the upper deck. They could use one right now. Last six games, Wimmers has walked eight of the 29 batters he has faced. And among relief pitchers who qualify, that's the most in that span of time. So you know how patient Napoli has been and can be. If Wimmers goes to nibbling. Oh yeah he's going to make you throw strikes. You know one thing with two outs. Base is empty. You wouldn't think he's going to leave one in the middle of the plate for him. Look at this. So Knapp takes it the other way. All right. Two out single. That's the last thing he expected but he 
threw something away. And Nap stayed on it. Oh, two out single. Watch this pitch. I think it was a little slider away off the plate, right off the end of the bat. Now, something to keep an eye on here, even though there are two outs. Terry Francona, when he talks about the Indians' improvement as a base running team, the guy he points to first is Mike Napoli. Now, the metrics used to measure those kind of things would say otherwise. But Terry's basically saying more from a setting an example kind of thing. Napoli's been important. Moving up on balls in the dirt, just being That's, aggressive. You know, that has set the tone. And the other guys who have the abilities to make those metrics shine, they're the ones that have benefited. And, and I agree with that. You don't have to be fast. Napoli reads the ball. He's looking right now in the dirt. Now there's a weak ground ball, and Santana can't get it done. We'll go to the bottom of the tenth, still tied at one. We go to the bottom half of the 10th inning. Andrew Miller is on now to pitch for the tribe. He is the eighth Indians pitcher to work here tonight. So that's the second time in well, second time in a week they've used eight pitchers in a game. Yep. Gotta love September baseball, huh? Well, the, the bullpens are bloated. Probably on every single team in baseball because that's where managers know they can exploit the current system. We got 15 relievers, let's call 15 of them up. Left, right, match up. Joe Maurer will lead off. Here in the bottom of the 10th, he is 0 for 4 tonight. And Miller with a fastball strike. Back in early August when the Twins came to Cleveland and they were red hot and hitting everything in sight. Andrew Miller made his debut. And that's when Joe Maurer took him deep. After that Miller settled in. And he retired everything in sight. The 0 2. He wanted to make sure that one was unhittable. And it was also uncatchable. In his last 12 games, Miller has faced 50 batters and they are eight 
for 50. Well, he's just tough to pick up, and you know he throws his fastball 95, 96, and he's got a slider that you just I don't know how guys can lay off of it, especially right-handers too, coming down and in. But against Houston, he threw a lot of sliders to the one guy uh, that hit the home run off him, and then the next night he came on. He, Guriel, that's right, hit the slider for a home run and then came in for fastballs. Now we're trying to go the other way, but it's out of play. Last 12 games, Miller has struck out 22 batters. Trying to make it 23 here against Maurer. Drill the deep left, but Coco is there. One away. And Maurer 0 for 5 tonight. It's going to bring up Jorge Polanco. Polanco with a hit in each of the first two games of the series. And takes a strike over the outside edge. Polanco, a 23 year old from the Dominican Republic, has batted 275 in his last 20 games here at Target Field. Minnesota has some good young players, you know, in their system. That their need, they need to find some starting pitchers, and that's something you know that's not an easy thing to do because if you have to go out and buy it, which they've paid dearly, you're you going to overpay. You end up having to overpay because you're not going to get free agents to come sign here for the most part. Well, it doesn't matter. Even if you did, Rick, you're just, you're just going to pay way too much. I know. It's just the nature of the beast. And, hey, I, I don't begrudge anybody that can get it. But, I mean, when you see some of the numbers that these pitchers are signing well, for, you get you're a going, 500 pitcher and they're getting 10, 12 million dollars. Yeah. I mean, so if you have to go after somebody, you need innings heaters. High pop. Shallow right. In comes Chisholm Hall. Two down. And we all know that history has shown us there's no clearly defined way of successfully drafting and developing pitchers. Sure. Because, you know, organizations have tried different things. You know, we're only going to draft high school pitchers because they haven't been messed with. You know, they haven't been abused by a college program, maybe. And you get those guys and they fall by the wayside because their arms either break down or they don't get yeah. developed the way you'd like. Other teams say we're going to go after college pitchers because they're a little more polished, they're a little closer, and those guys don't make the adjustment at the next level. So there's just you just never know. Well, the, first of all and foremost, they got to find a general manager. Well, to, Minnesota to, for yeah, sure. Yeah, you know to put in place, and, and they they have a lot of work to do here. 1 1 pitch in the air left field. Coco with a routine play. And a 1 2 3 10th. We'll play on to the 11th. Still tied at 1.
Extra innings are presented all season long by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Jack Link's Feed Your Wild Side. We may need a little Jack Link's up here. Yes, sir, I agree. <laughs> Get a little hungry. <laughs> Yeah, the tater tot bar was a real interesting creation today. Never seen before. one like yeah, that before, have you? It's like a nacho bar only with tater tots. Yeah. El Magnifico. Jose Ramirez takes in. It's a little bit low. Ball one. Alex Wimmers got the last out of the 10th, stays on a pitch here in the 11th. Ramirez one for four with a double. Out of play. We were talking though before we uh, went to break there about the Twins organization. It's been a real stable one for many years, consistently among the the game's very best, producing young talent. But they've hit a snag, and uh, General Manager Terry Ryan was let go, and now they're searching, as you said, for a, a new GM. Specifically, it sounds like they're going to hire somebody to oversee the baseball operations and then hire a GM as Ramirez grounds out. Alex Anthopoulos was rumored to be in the mix, but that has now been reported as being false or either that or he's taken his name out of consideration. So they're still looking for somebody to head the baseball side of the organization. And it will be interesting to see how that plays out and with what time frame it plays yeah, out. Yeah, well, the first thing you remember, it has to, you have to remain patient here because you can't do it overnight. Well, we'll continue this conversation right after this pitching change. One one, eleventh inning, one out, new pitcher, left hander Ryan O'Rourke. He's the sixth pitcher for the Twins here tonight. And we're going to get uh, Abraham Almonte to pinch hit for Chisholm Hall. Almonte with Coco Chris Bondek, one away. And the pitch up and away, ball one. Swung on and missed.
Another strike one and two. Change up right there had Almonte out front. Right back to him two away. Came back with that same pitch it was off the end of the bat. Almonte hit a little soft liner and it was right back to O'Rourke and he catches it. Change up down and away. Hit the change up. He he did right back to him. Two outs. Twins owner Jim Polad recently sent a, a letter out to all the Minnesota Twins season ticket holders and that of course got released to the public and put all over the internet. But among things he said was that they're they're happy with the job Paul Molitor's done. So it doesn't sound like Molitor's going anywhere, despite the fact the Twins could be headed toward a 100 loss season. We're headed to the bottom of the 11. Still tied at one. And it has been quite a night for Cleveland pitching. Mike Clevenger started. He went four, gave up one run. Since then, Percy Garner, an inning in the third scoreless. Jeff Manship, two thirds scoreless. Sean Armstrong, a third of an inning without allowing run. Kyle Crockett did the same. Zach McAllister, an inning in the third scoreless. Then Brian Shaw with a scoreless inning. Andrew Miller also worked a one, two, three, tenth inning. And now Dan Otero will be the ninth pitcher of the night. That's a season high for Cleveland. This bullpen cannot do any better. They went five uh, shutout innings last night. So I mean, it's they've been phenomenal. They really have. Miguel they Sano takes not a strike. do any better than what they have done. Dan Otero, 54 appearances, a 1.32 ERA. I'll tell you one thing that they would want. Corey Kluber to pitch a complete game tomorrow. Impossible, <laughs> wouldn't they? I know they have a boatload of arms, but still. Jam job up the middle, backhanded by Kipnis. Throws him out. Abraham Almonte stays in the game in right field. And Eddie Rosario, one for four on the night, will be the batter. They're in the ninth in Detroit where Baltimore has beaten the stuffing out of Detroit 11 to 3. Kansas City in Chicago leads the White Sox 6 4 in the ninth. Low ball one. 
Toronto beat Boston earlier today 3 to 2. So the Blue Jays trim the Red Sox lead to a game in the AL East. Baltimore will move to within two games. Yeah, Baltimore had to win because the Yankees they won again today. Yeah. So. And that means New York moves to within three games of first play. It's it is it's still really jammed up. The Yankees have won seven in a row, nine out of eleven. It'll be a fun three weeks. Dan Otero's fallen behind Rosario 3 0. For the Twins, this is their 14th extra inning game. They are 5 and 8. The Indians, their 11th. They are 5 and 5. Go to first. Got him. On a 3 0 pitch, Rosario hits a weak little ground yeah, ball. See, that's where you don't want results when you have a 3 0 pitch. You might as well take something. You know, if you're going to think you're going to hit a home run, you can't swing. That was a ball four. He helped him out. Thank you very much. That's a 3 0 pitch. It's very undisciplined. And you know what? You can't let him swing at that the next time if you're the manager. Is that, do you think, part of the bottom of the inning in extra? Let's win it, be the hero, the walk off, the whole thing? If you're going to be a hero. You're not going to hit that pitch. I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But, you know, the mentality hey, we need base runners. What are the upper? How many times do you try and hit a home run? Do you ever? It just seems like guys lose their discipline in extra. They do. Innings. You give away. That's a uh, an at bat that was given away in a 3-0 count. You're in the 11th inning. You've been busting it and playing hard all night long. You just gave that at bat away. The 0-1 pitch now to John Ryan Murphy, his first at bat of the night. I suppose that's where the mental grind. Of 140 games, yeah. and now it's uh, you know late Saturday night. You just your brain locks up on you. Yes, it does. You can have a brain cramp. Ground ball to short. Lindor throws him out. We head to the 12th. One-one ball game. Back here in Minneapolis. This is uh, the way things look currently. Cleveland leads Detroit by six in the AL Central. Texas leads Houston by nine and a hook coming into today. Boston had a two game lead. That's down to one. And the wild card is just just that wild. <laughs> yes it is. The Indians can pick up a, 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 another game if they win this one. Yeah. Yeah, that's a final in Detroit, 11-3. Yeah, they could go to seven, so. The Orioles pummeled the Tigers tonight. So, Chris Jimenez leads off. 
Here in the 12th in a check swing foul. New pitcher is JT Chagois. 16th appearance on the year. back Chagua from Sulphur Louisiana John Thomas but goes by JT missed inside Ooh, almost, almost him. got him yeah Watch this one. It's right there, and he turns right at the last minute. Almost. That's an elbow shot there. Chased and struck him out. One away. There's that slider down and away out of the zone. He gets Chris to chase after it. That's their only their fifth strikeout. We're into the 12th inning. Rajay Davis takes and close, but called a ball. JT Shagwa, a guy who missed a couple of years in the minors after the Tommy John surgery. He missed all of 2013 because the elbow was hurting and then had the surgery at the end of the season and rehab the whole next year. It's one of those deals where, you know, sometimes you, you'll hear team say well we're going to try and see if rest heals it right and you know in his case it did lifting and things like it that cost him a whole extra year right but the end result he still made it to the big leagues slowly chopped to third and Beresford throws it out Two down. Back in the ninth inning, Indians had a chance to take the lead with two on and two out. Rajay shot one to right. Max Kepler lay it out just inside the line. And that is the play of the night so far in this game because, oh yeah, instead of the Indians taking the lead, oh, kept his tied. Yeah, both runs would have scored there. It's a great catch. Now Jason Kipnis, he has singled, walked, grounded out, struck out twice his last two times up. And that's out of play. Despite being a Louisiana native, Chagua was not, uh, they didn't keep him in Louisiana. He ended up taking a baseball scholarship at Rice University in Houston. There's a ball ripped to first, and we're going to the bottom of the 12th, still tied at one.
bottom of the 12th here in Minneapolis. And the Indians 10th pitcher of the night. Will be Joe Colon fresh off his first major league win last night. He's got James Beresford Byron Buxton and Brian Dozier do up. Josh Tomlin is now up in the Cleveland bullpen. Outside of Tomlin, I'm looking out of my list. They got a ton of people in the bullpen, but now the only people left would be Cody Anderson, Austin Adams, who was just called up today, and Cody Allen. That's, but I think Cody they want to avoid. Oh yeah. So yeah, he's done. Get, getting down to the nitty gritty. Low ball one to James Beresford, who is one for three on the night. The Australian making his major league debut this evening, got his first big league hit back in the seventh. Shoots one toward left. Coco on the run makes a nice backhanded stab for out number one. Coco had a good jump on that baseball just outruns it. You can see he's not playing very deep but he is off and running as soon as it's hit. A little backhanded catch for the first out. And now Byron Buxton. Buxton 0 for 2. He has walked and laid down a sacrifice bunt. Guy has good power but he swings at a breaking ball. Well, he's been hot since his recall in September. You know, he says he's, he has a little more confidence. Uh, you know, he, he's been a little more aggressive at the plate. He's hit a lot of fastballs, and that's the one he hit last night was a fastball. Backhanded by Kipnis from the outfield grass. Hurries to throw, and a good one on the money. There's a great... I just blanked out. Uh, what do you call it? What's the word I'm looking for here? Great um, example of a player's internal clock. Because yeah. Kipnis gets rid of this ball instantly. Did you see how he, he knows who's running. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. they know what's going on. They know he gets down the line. So he had to really get his footwork set to make that throw and get something on it. Because Buxton gets down the line and he was peaking. He just does get him. He, he got to that... Uh, first base in under four seconds which is very good from the right side of the plate top of the order Brian Dozier hitless on the night 0 for 4 was intentionally walked back in the seventh By the way, Andre pointing out that the last time we did a game in which Vic Carapazza was behind the plate, it went 19 innings. That's true. That's right. But he's been outstanding tonight uh, behind home plate. He's been very consistent back there. And it didn't go that way for the opposing club the last time we went 19 innings because he ejected three people. Andre, you're saying that. He's saying, and every time I get these Indians. What's with these extra yeah, innings? Yeah, right. <laughs> Tell him I feel the same exact way about him behind the plate. Right <laughs> we got things to do. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, the pitching has been, it's easy to say, ah, oh, these guys are not hitting, they're giving away at bats. Pitch has been good. The pitching on both sides has been really good tonight. Look, we have 12 hits. We're in the bottom half of the 12 by, between both teams. There's a hard hit ball that finds a hole. And it's no surprise it's Dozier. Even though it's just his first hit tonight. Well and when you get in this situation and you're a hitter you're thinking two right out of the get go. So you have to get it as an outfielder and get it in as quickly as possible. This guy doesn't miss many fastballs I'll tell you that. And there you go you turn make a hard run at it. Go back to first so it's a two out single and that'll bring Maurer up to the plate. And Maurer is 0 for 5 in the ball game.
just outside. Redbird said this uh, ties a club record for the Indians with 10 pitchers used. In an extra inning game. Last time it happened was June of 2014. You would imagine the only time this could happen would be in a September call up situation just because of the numbers involved. Normally a team carries <laughs> seven bullpen pitchers during the season with five relievers for a 12 man staff. There at at most starters. 13. Yeah, sometimes 13. You're right, depending on the situation and how it's going. So when that happened back in 2014, they had to use you know all of the bullpen and probably an extra starter. Now the one one. I'll tell you what, uh, Dozier's over there at first thinking about it, but uh, Cologne's doing a nice job of just holding the ball. He watch his hands over there and start flinching. He wants to go somewhere, but he's, he's doing a nice job of making him wait. Well, in that uh, 19 inning game, of course, they, they went, what, the 13 shutout innings the bullpen did, and Bauer gave up five of them, so they've used the next day's starter in that ball game earlier in the year. I don't remember how many pitchers we used in it. Joe Maurer awaiting the one two Joe Cologne trying to get out of the frame jammed him but fouled out of play On Cologne, and that puts the winning run in scoring position. Now I think you got to walk Mauer, even though you got him down on the count. Yeah, I want to see if uh, what happens here on the block first. Let me think about this. I didn't see it. Well, I didn't either. I just saw him step off the rubber. What did I miss? Must have did something with the front shoulder because it's the home plate umpire that Watch. makes the call. All right, let's see on his, his back leg. He must have saw something. See that leg? Oh yeah. See that leg? A little flinch I mean, in there. Geez. He got that. It's a balk. Well, Callaway goes to the mound and talks to him, but I I wouldn't pitch to to Maurer here. I would just sort of put him on and make Polanco beat you. But Mickey must have given him strict instructions. You know, if you got to go at him, don't. <laughs> well, we'll see how he goes at him. And the one-two in the dirt. Nice job by Chimpanez to smother that ball. Well, and the reason why it is a nice pick here on that slider, why I say I would walk him is because he, you don't get him to chase off the plate a whole lot. This is one of the most disciplined hitters in the game. So take your chances with the next guy. the 2 2 back out of play he gave him a fastball but you can see at 97 elevated and now couldn't do anything but follow it off should Mauer reach in other words should they walk him then Jorge Polanco is the on deck hitter. He's a switch hitter. Oh. 
I say walk because if Maurer gets a hit, there's a real good chance this game's over. Yeah. With Dozier off one with two outs. The 2 2. Low, full count. That was a good pitch. It's just Maurer, as you said, he's got such great discipline. You know, a lot of hitters might have seen that coming, thinking it was a fastball and swung over the top of it. But, but he, he's he's in his mode where he's waiting on the ball and trying to take it the other way. He's not the thinking pole. He'll foul off tough pitches, but he won't swing at bad pitches. He watched the play for far too long. The three-two breaking ball, ball game. He hung it, and Maurer wins it for Minnesota. Well, he tries to throw that slider. You're going to speed up his bat in this situation. He's thinking the other way, and that's what you get. Base hit. Game over. Walk off for Joe Maurer. Well, Minnesota wins game two of this series. In walk off fashion. Yeah, this is one of those games where you look at it. If you're an Indians fan, you're watching this game, you're frustrated because the Indians' offense really didn't generate many scoring opportunities. And, and the few that they had, they were unable to come through with the clutch hit. Their only run came in the first inning in which they left the bases loaded. But on the other hand, you look at it and say, you know, it was, it was a pretty well-pitched game, and it just came down to look, the Twins got the key hit. Our and bullpen won. cannot pitch any better than they have. They went five innings last night, and they were unbelievable. They shut them out from the second inning on, so they went almost 10 innings tonight. I mean, sooner or later, they got to get a hit. And it was just one of those games. I, I would have chosen to, to walk Maurer and let somebody else beat you, but they tried to pitch to him, and then you see what happened. The veteran got him. Well, they, they certainly give the Tigers a little bit of life tonight because this would have been a chance to open up a seven-game lead in the division with time dwindling in the month of September. As it stands, the Indians will still lead Detroit by six in the division when we come back tomorrow to wrap up the series. Indians now 82 and 59 on the year. Minnesota 53 and 89. So that's going to wrap things up. Final score, Minnesota 2, Cleveland 1. For Rick Manning and Andre Knott, I'm Matt Underwood. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Indians Live with Alan Jensen is next. We'll be back tomorrow, 2 o'clock Eastern, with the finale in the series from Minnesota.